The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, my partner, Malik Hill, and look who's back. We got Chris Pappas back, back in the building for our NBA preview show. Also, it's basically episode 199, but we're going to call it episode 200. Uh, yeah, you know, how are you guys doing? Uh, it's great to have the three of us back in action for this special NBA preview episode. Uh, how are you guys feeling about the games last night? How are you feeling about today going to the Pistons home opener? It's a great day. It is a good day. It's a, it is a great day. The Pistons have hope. That's something we haven't been able to say in a long time. I was thinking the about Pistons it. Pistons have hope. I was thinking about it. Last time I was on these airwaves, I mean, in the studio, if I said anything positive about the Pistons, Joey would be biting my head off. Yeah. Now we got Cade. Jay Nivey's looking good. I will loosen up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, you got to save some of that positive energy for your Lions, though, right? Uh, no. <laughs> so that's all over, as Malik already knows. Um, so, first, right away, before we get into NBA, we got to finish. Uh, you know, we got to do week seven picks. We can't forget that. We got to talk about uh, Michigan, Michigan State really, really quick. Michigan, big win against Penn State. Looking good. Finally, probably national championship contender. Probably one of the favorites now. Um, Malik, what's your confidence level right now? You said you were. They thought you thought they were going to win. Win, wait, 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 win the win the Natty. No, Penn State. He just, oh, okay. He okay. didn't feel like that was a scary game. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't afraid of Penn State. James Franklin has proven now after several. I don't count the COVID season. It was besides Alabama and Ohio State and like Clemson. That team didn't. I mean, that season didn't mean much for most teams. And he keeps getting his head beat in when he comes to Ann Arbor. I didn't expect it to be that bad, honestly. I mean, they ranked fifth in run defense and Michigan put up over 400 rushing yards on them. They just, they made it look easy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're a championship team, they could win the big 10. Anything after that will, will get there if it happens, but they're good enough to be 11 and 0 going into the Ohio state game. Yeah. Their, their O-line is just as good as last year, maybe better. Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum are dominating right now. Blake Horm is in the Heisman race. They don't need J.J. McCarthy to become a superstar right now, and that's probably best for J.J. and the team, that it all doesn't have to be on his shoulders right now, even though some fans want it to all be on his shoulders, which is stupid. But, yeah, the defense played great. They, it was just a dominant win. Yeah, they looked good. Yeah, uh, Michigan State actually got a win. They beat Wisconsin in double overtime. Thought they were going to lose that game too, but, you know, they came out on top, whatever. We'll talk more about them next week. Uh, also, Rocky Top taking down Alabama. That was yeah. cool. Biggest win for Tennessee in years. I mean, goalposts so in the happened. lake? Yeah, so, listen, they need go new goalposts there. They went crazy down there. I have friends in Tennessee that called me after the game <laughs> yeah. going nuts. So, so yep. yeah. We'll get into it more next week. Uh, obviously, with uh, Michigan Michigan State playing each other next weekend. So, that'll be a good discussion. Moving on to week seven picks. It was a rough week. Things were weird. NFL's been Rough weird. Rough for who exactly? Uh, both of us. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we both we both correctly got seven picks right. Um, so the standings have not moved. Um, no real notable picks last week. I guess Malik taking the Giants over Baltimore. That was pretty good. Um, what were what were our records? Did either of us have a winning record for the week? Uh, I usually just do correct picks. Okay. So, I mean, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's 14 games, so we're 7 and 7. <laughs> okay. So, you know. Yeah. This this NFL season has made no sense so far. Yeah. Yep. But that's been it's been fun, though. The Seahawks and Falcons were yeah. supposed to be the worst teams in the league. 
and they are like good teams right now. How Falcons, could, it, does, it makes no sense. Falcons are the only team to cover the spread on every single game this season. That's crazy. <laughs> That's a good stat. Yeah. Uh, also, how could you doubt my guy, Gino? Gino Smith. He's Listen, we're not going to do this. That's, a, that's, we a, are that's not gonna, an OG Jets player is, right there. Gino in New York OG Jets was a mess. <laughs> Everybody knew he was a mess. He has grown so much. I mean, at least he's He pay- deserves so much credit. He's paying his dues now. He's ready. Yeah. Anyway. Playing better than Russell Wilson. Getting yeah. right into the picks because we got we to go fast. We got to get into these NBA. So we're not going to really detail the actual teams. But Chris is going to get on in on it this week just for a, a one-week wonder, hopefully. Malik six at 46, correct. I have 49 on the season. Ooh. So here we go. Thursday night, finally have an okay Thursday night game. New Orleans at Arizona. I'm going New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans at Phoenix? At, yeah, yeah, at Arizona, yeah. Uh, um, New Orleans at Phoenix. I'm going to go, man. Yeah, I have no faith in Arizona still. Yeah, give me New Orleans. The new Call of Duty hasn't dropped yet. Give me Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. <laughs> it's around the corner, though. Detroit at Dallas. <laughs> no, we, we why? Just mark down Let's Dallas, all three. All right. <laughs> no this is the game I'm that. scared of. Yeah, that's going to be the one yeah. the Lions win. There's uh, only one Detroit team we're talking about. The today. Lions have, you know, one of the best offensive lines in the country, or in the NFL, supposedly. We'll find out for sure this week. Atlanta at Cincinnati. Cincinnati. They, they needed that win at New Orleans, and I think they're back on track somewhat, not all the way. I think so, Jamar too. Chase is back on back in the zone. I'm going to go Cincinnati as well. <sighs> Cincinnati looked really good last week. I want Atlanta will slow them down and will cover, hopefully. Yeah. It'll, yeah, be a close, yeah. it'll be a close game. If this was to fourth. cover the spread, I'd take Atlanta, but give me, you know, Burrow and the Bengals' money line. Indy at Tennessee. Hopefully, Indy has, hopefully Jonathan Taylor versus Derrick Henry. Indy looked a lot better last week. Mm-hmm. Matt Ryan looks good. He's still kind of cooked, but he's like halfway cooked. <laughs> Not all the way yet. I'm going to go with Indy. Okay. Give me Tennessee. Besides Derrick Henry, I can't trust that Tennessee team. I just can't. How can you trust the Colts? I'm going with Tennessee. I, I like I like how they looked last week. It looked like they, they figured something out. Right. Green Bay right. at Washington. This is just a Washington sad Washington won an ugly one, and Green Bay has lost back-to-back games against New York. This, That's rough. I gotta go Packers. Sad I mean, times in Green Bay. Yeah. I the commies are too too rough. You think they gotta figure it out? This is in Washington. Yes. Yeah, I'm going Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> what if it was in Green Bay? You're going Commanders. I was, <laughs> I'm going yeah. Taylor Heineke. Oh, I forgot Heineke is starting. Heineke is starting. Give it to me. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, wait, wait, hold wait, on. Back up. Carson Wentz is out <laughs> for wait, four wait, weeks. I forgot wait, Taylor. Heineke. You guys gotta know your intel. My bad. Give me the commies. Commanders. Yeah, Taylor Heineke. <laughs> That dude All is you guys fun are to watch. flipping on Taylor Heineke. Oh yes, yes. 100. <laughs> percent I trust him with that Washington team. Well, here's they the, have more life than Green Bay has. They're either going to get Taylor Heineke. They're either going to get blown out, or Taylor Heineke is going to throw for 350 plus four touchdowns, four interceptions. They're going to win a. Crazy We're all going to be wrong. I oh, think yeah. they're going to lean on Brian Robinson. We are all about to be wrong. Tampa Bay Robinson. at Carolina. Tampa Bay has had some rough time. It's time for Carolina to clean house. Trade, trade DJ everybody. Moore. Trade everybody. Yeah. DJ McCaffrey. D- Robbie is already. Robbie got kicked out the game. Mm-hmm. They kicked. They traded him on national Next TV. Next day. Basically. Next day he got traded. Clean house. You got to. You got Donald. a young defense. Now you just got to go with the young offense. Well, they might trade Brian Burns too now. So. <sighs> who's Car- well, who's Carolina playing? Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Tampa. Oh yeah. Give isn't but isn't Brian Burns just like in his second year or third? I mean, he's still pretty young. Yeah. So you got to keep the young defense. You can't trade the young guys. I'm going with Tampa as well. Giants at Jacksonville. When will the Giants break? No. Nah, five and one. Jacksonville. Oh, give me Giants. Trevor Lawrence outplays Daniel the, Jones. I'm with Chris. I got the Giants. The G men. How 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 many games in the ro- in a row do you think they win? You think this? They might go. Going? They might go sixteen I think, and one. I think Brian Dayball has got some <laughs> unique play calling that is working out. This is why we need Chris for those types of comments. Got to. Cleveland at times. Baltimore. Baltimore has blown every fourth quarter game <sighs> the last three weeks. They won't blow this one. Baltimore. I trust Lamar to I'm going Baltimore. outplay J- Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, I'm going Baltimore. I got to ride with the Browns. Oh, boy. Do you have to? I do. Got <laughs> to ride with them. The Guardians just lost. Cleveland That's is fine. losing steam. The Cavs are coming. Here we go. This oh, is I what, will never re- root for the Cavs. <laughs> this never. is what we came for. 
Jets this is why we're here. at the Broncos. Let, let's, let's, that is the easiest. Let's, let's give Wait, Chris let's a it. full minute. Open the floor. No, no, no. Let's just let do him. this in unison. J E T S Jets Jets Jets. That is my favorite. That was my favorite part of views from the sideline. Where they play? I didn't even hear who they. Denver. Played. It didn't matter oh, who yeah. they played. It didn't matter. <laughs> Listen, Zach Wilson Receipts, hasn't. Even, Malik. Zach Wilson Receipts. hasn't been that great, and they still. No, he there. hasn't. Sauce Gardner. Oh, Sauce. that young man from Detroit. I tried to tell Brees you. Hall. Come on. Do rag under the helmet. Bru- Brees Hall and Sauce. Those are the that has Listen, been. Garrett that Wilson team. when they Quinn can get him. Quinn and Williams having a breakout too. Dude. Yeah, yeah, he's been those, solid. Their draft picks in the past two seasons. Give Joe Douglas a raise. Yeah, please. <laughs> Those draft picks are incredible. Houston at Vegas. Vegas. I, Houston. I like Davis Mills, but I love you, Smith. I, I need him to go somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I need Vegas. Like Houston has good young players. How are you guys picking Damian Vegas? Damian Pierce, Nico one, Collins. Vegas is – you guys are acting like this is They're like, a playoff team from a year Houston ago. Houston is just lifeless, though. Vegas, Vegas is Vegas, lifeless. At least Vegas, at least Vegas has shown that they can put up points. and Vegas has got do, talent. Yeah. They almost beat the Chiefs. I'm going to laugh when you guys go through the picks last Listen, week and see the Vegas, Texans. Vegas isn't going to score nine against Houston like Jacksonville did. You're right. You know what? Ago. I'm calling They're it. Score Texans 23. <laughs> okay. Vegas Texas nine. 23. Okay. <laughs> Seattle at the Chargers. I think Seattle is going to start Seattle. coming back down to work. Was, yeah. Was, right. This is probably a terrible pick. But Seattle. See, as much as I love Geno, I'm not even going to pick him. Give me the Chargers. I I I don't know what is going on with I that think, team. I think the Seahawks are ready to go on a downside, yeah. and I think the Chargers are starting to come back up. Yep. They, they probably are. I agree I'm with that. Wrong. I'm probably wrong. This is going to be my out there pick for the week. I'm Kansas City now. at San Francisco. San Francisco blew Atlanta, out the Rams. Atlanta, like, beat them. And then lost to the – yeah, it, it's been weird. Kansas City. Casey all the way. Give me the Niners. Feed me the Niners. <laughs> Feed me the Niners. There's always an upset. Always something we're not looking for. How many? Malik and I have some similar picks. Kansas City's been really hot lately in San Francisco. Bounce back game. Jimmy G. I'll go with San Francisco. Oh, come on, Joe. I got some I got some points to spare. Uh, Pitt, Don't get cocky now. Ooh, Pittsburgh at Miami. This Pittsburgh just be beat Tampa game. Bay. Yeah, that's going to be a tough what, game. What is Tua back yeah. this game? He's supposed to be. Oh, man. It's not 100%, yeah. but he's supposed to be. If Tua. Oh, you say go. it's at Miami? Yes. I don't have faith in Pittsburgh going back to back. Their yeah. offense just isn't. Those, those young guys are doing everything they can, but I'm going Miami. Yeah, feed me Miami, too. Yep, I'm with you guys. New England, or technically Chicago at New England. For Monday night, what this a is terrible Bailey Monday Zappy night. Express. Oh yeah, there's no you. If you pick the Bears, <laughs> there's something wrong with you. Listen, that that Patriots defense, they're going to do. They they shouldn't put this on TV what they're about to do to Justin Fields. <laughs> that Patriots, those young DBs, those are two rookies that are locking people down over there. All right, over under fifty oh, passing man. yards for Justin Fields. Fifty. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be over because they're going to be over behind. under a hundred. I think that's that is honestly going. That's to be well, like, yeah. I was just trying to. Does he throw for over a hundred yards? Throw the shade. Probably. Are you sure? I say under. I'll, I'd take the under. I think they're going to be behind. Bill so. Belichick is about to try to ruin his career in one game. All right. I think he's going to get knocked out of the game. That's our week seven let's picks. Not, let's, let's not hope for that. That was pretty solid. <laughs> NBA season is back. That's what we're all here for. So we're going to go over divisions. We're going to go over our preseason awards of who we think is going to win the awards. Um, and, yeah, we had NBA basketball for the first time last night. Celtics, Sixers, Warriors, Lakers. Chris, what were your takeaways from those two early games? My biggest takeaway was how much better James Harden looked. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't get me wrong. He totally botched a crossover shimmy to the left side of the backboard. But aside from that, 35 points, 7 assists. Kind of taking command of that team. Good things happen when you get in great shape, right? Well, exactly. exactly. When when you finally want to get in great shape. He was in shape. And mm-hmm. you could see it, and that's really what James Harden needed to do. Get in shape, and everything else is going to fall into place. I really like Philly this year, and I think that was the biggest takeaway from day one was James Harden and the Sixers are going to be for real. Mm-hmm. Malik, you got any takeaways from those games? I'm surprised about how well the Celtics came out. It looks like there won't be a lot of fall off. Mm-hmm. After the game, they celebrated with their coach like they're com- like completely comfortable with them. Yep. Mm-hmm. Tatum and Brown, they just, 35 each. Malcolm Brogdon off the bench. It's, 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 it's really going to be a problem. 
Yeah. Once Time Lord gets healthy, because the the amount of players and how much they can throw at you, like Brock didn't just fit right in off the bench, just came in scoring, making it look easy. They already have chemistry. Is yeah, Boston and Philly, they might have. Yeah, I hope they meet up in the playoffs. I'm intrigued to see what Bo- like when we get to the January, the dog days of the NBA season. Mm-hmm. How is Boston going to react to those tough moments? You know, without their leader in their in the locker room in Ime. I mean, is I, that is that where it falls apart a little bit? Where they kind of take a couple steps back, or I think they're I, mean, I think they're close enough and good enough as a team. They've been together for so many years at this point that. I, I just don't see it happening. I'm mm-hmm. still a firm believer that coaches in the NBA don't really matter. So, I, I don't think so. I, I think, it, like Malik said, though, if it was a young team, probably. They are Technically, young. they're young, but they've been in these experiences now. So, I think they'll be fine. Um, my takeaway is Celtics are still good. I was kind of surprised. Like, I don't know. I, I didn't believe the Celtics last year. I'm still skeptical for some reason yeah. of them. Um but they they looked so good last night. I can't you can't deny it. Um, and then, how do you stop the Warriors? Like, well, I got one more takeaway. Get the Lakers off my TV. <laughs> well, they'll be there a few more. That times. is the that might be the biggest takeaway of this entire podcast. I Thank mean, you for saying that, sir. Um, get the Lakers off of prime time games. I mean, I get they will be there because LeBron yeah. and AD and everybody has to talk about them. But it won't be pretty a lot. Anthony Davis looked lethargic last night. He I mean, he, he play- came out hot. Yeah. He hasn't then, played in yeah. a year, though. Yeah. He came out looking really good. Russ played decently well, but when you don't have any shooters. After he babied um, his way back to the starting lineup, I'm still kind of upset. He's the Russell Lakers Westbrook. Even they should have started Patrick Beverly. <laughs> they backed off on that. They should have started Patrick They did start. They Beverly. did. They yeah. started them both. Oh, and it both wasn't of them? great. <laughs> yeah, it was it weird. Wasn't great. It, it was it's weird. It was funky. It was uh, those two, Lonnie Walker, AD, and LeBron. Mm. Yeah, it was odd. All right. Um. Let's go division by division, because I know Chris has this all. I already got all my planned out. I got all my seedings. So we're almost twenty minutes in. So we got forty minutes to do six divisions plus our awards. Right. So we got to go somewhat fast. So we'll hit on the key teams okay. in each division, and of course, when we get to the central, we'll talk about the Pistons. Do we want to do the central first or last? Last. Okay. Yeah, last. So let's start with the East. We'll do the Atlantic. Uh Chris, what do you got record-wise uh, in the Atlantic Division? And then I'll kind of give my standings. I didn't put records in, but we'll talk about some of those top teams because the Atlantic is interesting. Let's see here. Um, I mean, Boston-Philly, I think, is a story, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw it last night. I think those two are going to be the class of the division. I mean, this is going. I think this is going to be the toughest division in basketball this season. Uh, every single team in that division is an aspiring – playoff team outside of the Knicks you know they're going they're trying to get to the play in you could see uh top four in the east go Boston Philly Brooklyn Toronto it's possible and there's just a lot of high expectations in this division a lot of you know a lot of solid players I think the Knicks are going to finish last in the division um just based off of how how great this division is um it's going to be the most exciting basketball throughout the league though Malik, what do you what do you think about this division? Yeah, I I think uh, very similarly. I think the Knicks could win like 36, 37 games and still finish last. Yeah, I don't know what to think about Brooklyn because Ben Simmons, you just you don't know. You mm-hmm. have no idea whether it's going to be injury, whether it's going to be his psyche, whether it's it, you just don't know. Yeah, if it all goes well and Ben plays his role perfectly, they should win over fifty games easily. But yeah, Boston and Philly, they're going to be fighting for the to be at the top of this division. Toronto, sleeper to go to make a playoff run, but we'll get to that later. A lot of people are talking about Toronto to be a top four team, like a lot of the you know the analytic experts uh, that cover the NBA. I'm not super sold on them. Like I think they're going to be good and be a playoff team. Top four, I think, is pushing it. I think you're going to see them hover around 40 wins. So they have a lot of solid players. They'll get they'll get well over 40. They'll get well in over a competitive 40. east. I will, in a competitive east, yes. I will tell you my standings right now for this division. I think they can get the fifth or sixth seed. I, I have. I agree, but I'm not sure they're going to be I have, well over forty in this division. Like 46, 47? I have Nets, Celtics, Sixers, Knicks, Raptors. You have the Knicks ahead of the Raptors. You have the Nets ahead of everyone. Yes. 
Wow. You have the Knicks. I, I think the Raptors. I think the Nets, it's that time where everybody's kind of doubting them that they're going to come I out. can see that, yeah. And I think the Knicks, they were a playoff team two years ago. They did, they did look and really that, good in the And preseason. that looks like a one-hit one. No, no, but they did look really good in the but preseason. They, Jalen Brunson was added, awesome. They added Jalen Brunson. Yeah. Hopefully, Mitchell Robinson stays healthy. One yeah. of my favorite bigs in the league right now. Um, the Raptors are. He could be a defensive the player are, of the year. Are like a whole thing coming that, back, though. That team is still there. Nick Nurse. But I'm with I'm with Chris. Like, the Raptors are hard to wrap your head around. Yeah, yeah. The Knicks aren't? <laughs> they're easy I, to wrap your head around? I feel like, no. It's a bunch of assumptions with the they're Knicks. They're not. The Raptors I think are it's a good team we already know. I think it's... It's tough. I feel like I can talk myself into the Knicks more than I can talk myself into the Raptors. But because of what they did last year, I'm going to lean Raptors and how this division goes and where they stand. Mm -hmm. But I just like the makeup of the Knicks. And if the key is health, right? Yeah. Jalen Brunson looks great early on. They could be a good team. I, I think R.J. Barrett good. had his breakout season last year. R.J. Barrett's shooting the three ball well early in the preseason. He's just a hair under 40%, which is great. Um, and that's where you need him to be with Jalen Brunson being your lead guard. And if Mitchell Robinson stays healthy in that type of Thibodeau def uh, like type of defense, he could be a defensive player of the year player if the Knicks are solid and he stays healthy. And it's they still have Julius Randle. Is, uh, is that a positive uh, I'm out or a on negative? Julius Randle. <laughs> is that He's a still one of my favorites. Listen, after last year, <laughs> I could. I don't know how you can still up yeah. after last year. Yeah, he was rough. <laughs> but maybe Brunson will help. So who do you guys have winning this division then? I got Philly. Okay. Boston. Oh, nice. We all have different picks. That'll be fun to see how that shakes out. Yeah, it'll be an interesting division either way. Joe, you're keeping tabs on these? Yeah, I just wrote them down cool. real quick. Uh, Southeast division. Let's head over there. Uh, Hawks, Heat, Magic, Wizards, Hornets. Kind of a front-loaded uh, division with the Hawks and the Heat. And that's... Exactly how I have the standings. I have the Hawks winning the division, Heat, Magic, Wizards, Hornets. I think the the Hornets are in line to be the worst team in basketball. Uh, I think, honestly, I think that the Southeast division could be the worst division in the NBA this year. The Hawks, I'm not sold on. I like Deontay Murray, but how is that really going to work with Trey Young? I'm not sold on that pairing just yet. John Collins, there's all this talk about trading him last trade deadline. All of a sudden, he's part of the core again. There's a lot of these moving pieces. Clint Capella, is he going to stay healthy? I like Onyeka Okongwu. I think he should be their starter. Um, but I there's so many intangibles that I still think COVID year Hawks, you know, they were they got hot at the right time. Mm -hmm. And their true form is a 7-8 seed. So that's kind of where I ride with the Hawks. Um, Charlotte, I'm out on them this year. I think they're going to be one of those teams that drop. I see them, like, they're going to be in the Wimbanyana sweepstakes, in my opinion. Yep. Ball's out early. So much trouble with this team, but, you know, from Miles Bridges to James now Book James Knight. Booknight. Um, there's so many things happening. It just – it's not a good omen heading into your season. I'm not sure they're going to be too great. Yeah. Miami, I think they're a year past of truly being a competitor in the East. I think this is the year we see them take a step back mm -hmm. unless they make a drastic move which I think they should have been a team that got Donovan Mitchell. If they did, they would have put themselves back up into that spot, and I think they really needed that. Jimmy Butler's he's a great player. How much can he carry him? Bam out of Bayou. He, I think he'll be a defensive player of the year candidate and a most improved player candidate. But after those two players, it's a lot of fillers. And I'm just not super huge. I think they'll be a playoff team, but I'm not sure how far. Orlando, I'm out on them. Um, they're just, you know, they're a good young team. They have, they have been a good young team, I think, for 10 years now. Um, and Paolo Bancaro is exciting to watch. Wizards are the Wizards. I mean, Monte, I like the Monte Morris edition, but, you know, you have Monte Morris, Bradley Beal, Will Barton, a lot of guards. Porzingis, you know, I don't think he really adds too much. The Wizards just need to get rid of Bradley Beal and start from scratch, and they just won't do it, and then I don't get it. Yeah, they ruined it by resigning yeah, they've him. they've been in purgatory. Um, I'll say my winner in the division is Miami by default because this, I think it's the worst division, division in basketball. Okay. I do have the Hawks, like I said. I think them in the Northwest, which we'll get to, those are two of the low divisions. Um, I get the fear of the Hawks, but I think they're a more unknown quantity than the Heat are. Like, we know what the Heat are. Unless, I think the only chance for the Heat is if somehow Oladipo is, like, sixth man of the year. And I don't even know, if like, how they're going to use him. 
because they have Tyler Hero, they just extended him and all that. But well, Hero's going to be the yeah, Hero's the starter. They came out right. and said that he's going to start right because they're moving him because he didn't want to be a, no. a bench player anymore. Um, Old Depot just hasn't been right since his knee and his hip right. injuries. Maybe that is his role, right? Maybe he it looked is good in, he, like he looked good in spots last year. Yeah. So I think that's like the kind of the thing that I'd be looking for. Yeah. And then the Hawks, I just think talent, their talent level is just a little bit higher than the Heat at this I can point. See it, yeah. And I think both Deontay Murray and Trey Young, Trey Young can play off the ball more. And I mean, I mean that's Steph Curry rule, right? Yeah. 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 And then like Deontay Murray is more of an attacker. Whereas Trey Young, I mean, he he attacks, but being yeah. able to set him out at the three point line and space things out, then you have Deontay Murray and John Collins working on the inside. I think good things can happen. Mm-hmm. There. Yeah, um, I'm I'm gonna go. My guy, Jimmy Butler in Miami. Oh, uh, he's still your guy. Yes, I think. You see the braids though, uh, or the listen, dreads? My bad. Dreads. Uh, we're we're not gonna talk about that. We're, we're not gonna go into rough. that. <laughs> But, yeah, we like you said, we know what we're getting out of Miami. I still think they're between, like, a 50 and 55 win team. Atlanta is too much of an unknown. I think they have an extremely high ceiling, but I have to see it. I think they're most likely high 40s. And then there's a major gap between that. I'm higher on Orlando than you two. I have them in the middle, and I think they're – In the mid. I think they're they're there. They're I think, ready to take a I turn. I think Franz and Paolo I like are, are, I a, like are a perfect – duo of this generation and i think they can be special together and this is the first time they've had a good young core in forever they have guys that they can actually stick with for years but they still have some of their core guys that are out. i mean markel fultz isn't starting the year jalen suggs is just coming off an injury but i think franz and paolo are special enough to get them yeah. wins that they probably shouldn't get i mean what year is, do you guys think we see jonathan isaac back on the court <sighs> listen oh well, they're supposedly more known they, as an author right now than a basketball supposedly player. Supposedly so, uh, he can play this year, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But listen, they care more about Bull Bull and Mo Bamba than him, which they That's should. That's what they should care about. They hey, should. Former, former Piston for a day, Bull Bull. Yes. Yeah, and sad. I think Orlando could possibly match the wins of Washington because nobody should have hope in Washington. Just, <laughs> they've been yeah. in purgatory forever. And I, I agree. Yeah, yeah there's, there's no getting out. In Charlotte, listen, Miles Buchnight, Gordon, Hay- Gordon Hayward can't stay healthy. Lamelo is what you have. And he's you, hurt. You, you can't depend on Terry Rozier to you'd like play winning basketball. Kelly Oubre is good for twenty five points every ten games. What I truly think tank for one Banyama. Like why? I why, don't try to make the play. No, I agree with you. And sit Lamelo out after like fifty something games. Yeah, just sit him. I truly think if none of the Bridges stuff happened, like the arrest and all the details came out, I truly think the Pistons were going to make a run at him. Yeah, um, they, they, that's probably what tried, all, they probably would have I mean, think about it. sounded like it yeah, was happening. Yeah, and they made a trade for Boyan Bogdanovich, who's playing that four role now, right? I think they would have signed Miles to a max restricted free agent. Now, does Charlotte match? If nothing happens, probably. Yeah. But I think the Pistons would have made a run at him. Yeah. Yeah, Charlotte, we all agreed, dead last mm-hmm. in the division. So, there's the Southeast. Sucks they're, for LaMelo. They're all right. Now, the Northwest, they're another division I am I have no idea about. I think they could be. I'm intrigued by this one. I think they could be the worst division as well, though. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, it is a little bottom heavy. But my order of standings for the Northwest, I think the Nuggets are going to come back. Clear. Jamal Murray, you know, they if he stays healthy, three. of course, yeah. they should be back in, in a groove. Uh, I do think the Timberwolves will be second. I think they made enough moves to maybe get into the playoffs. That Rudy Gobert deal is, a, it might be the biggest swing in either way. Yeah, for a team, mm-hmm. and I don't know which one. Yeah. I think that's more of a year two trade, though. This first year, you're going to see a lot, especially in the early going, between Cat and Rudy getting used to each other. Mm-hmm. I think Timberwolves are going to be good this year, yeah. but I think next season is really where we're going to see them. Make, yeah, make I, I would agree. And in the preseason, it was interesting. They were giving Rudy some touches. Yeah, I think just to keep. Oh, him definitely, happy. definitely. And yeah, seeing Cat on the outside and him on the inside, it'll be mm-hmm. kind of interesting because they played five out a lot last year. Mm-hmm. And I think that made them, like, unique. So, yeah. we'll see. And then I have the Blazers, Thunder, and Jazz. Blazers, I think their time is over. They're I like, like the Jeremy Grant pickup for them. I think he fits, though. I, Malik and I have been in the boat. They need to just blow it up. I mean, stop, if, if you have Dame Lillard, I understand trying. you're Portland and you have a superstar. I understand you want to keep him forever. And Dame loves being there. But This is what I think is going to happen. I think they're going to start the season with aspirations for the playoffs. You have Dame. 
You're going to see what you have with Dame and Anthony Simons because Anthony was fantastic to finish out the season. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, numbers-wise, he surpassed what C.J. McCollum was producing for them. So what do you have in Dame and Simmons with Jeremy? And then you have Yusuf Nurkic back. Having GP2 out hurts. Yeah, ton. yeah, he was going to be a key player off their bench. Lot. But I think they will They'll start off with that aspiration, and then maybe they blow it up in – early January to get into the Wimbanyana sweep. There's going to be so many teams that try to get into those sweepstakes. It's going to be crazy. Speaking of those teams, uh, two of them are right here in this division. The Thunder and the Jazz. I want the Thunder to tank for Victor. Victor and Chet. Listen, to trade and Shea will be a possibility. It will. My Pistons Pres are... In Presti has the picks. Presti has a player. He might get up in there. I, I just I don't want to see the Thunder get Wimbanyana. I can't keep butchering his name. Victor. I'm just going to say Victor. Yeah. <laughs> just I, I keep butchering his name. But um, Wen Benyama. Wen Benyama. Okay, there we go. But I'm going to mess it up again. Um, it's okay. We know what you're talking about. I just – they've been tanking for six years now. Mm -hmm. Just – I don't want – Shai Gilgis Alexander is a fantastic player, and he's been rotting in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Get rid well, of him. To be That's fair – they, They've been through – They've been going through a whole rebuilding process as he's become a star. I well, think so. That's it's just a it's just a horrible. Well, they need to yeah. make it, they need to decide. Which is why I've said, yeah. Well, I think putting him out there on the trade market is probably going to be the best thing for yeah. him. Yeah, I might have had them be a dark horse if Chet was playing this season for like the play in. I think it would have been. I don't a know chance. if I could have went that far. I think it would have been their chance. They, Sam Presti wouldn't have let it happen. We'll see that too. <laughs> see, I'm serious. Like that franchise is the franchise that will shut players down before anybody else. Shy had Shy played 40 games last year. Yeah. For, well, to be fair, like, I would have sat Chet for the season, too. Oh, 100%. But I'm just saying, yeah, if he yeah, didn't yeah. get injured at all, I, I would have had them maybe be a team. I mean, I would have had them above. I have them slotted at 19 wins. Maybe I would have given them 23. <laughs> uh, and then the Jazz, man. That, those are the worst two teams in the That's NBA what you call season. it, blowing it up. Yeah. I like what the Jazz they are, did. They aren't the worst, too. I think the Jazz and the Thunder are the worst two teams. They in the are game. not the worst two. As it sits right now, the that's Thunder my are not worse than the Spurs. You stop it right now. You, Spurs you got can, some young guys. They have some young guys. The Thunder, are, Keldon Johnson, Jakob Pertl, okay, Greg Popovich, <laughs> Greg Popovich. <laughs> okay, Devin keep Vassell. going. Keep going. Devin Vassell. I think they're gonna be a solid team. A Greg Popovich team is not going to tank, regardless. They're gonna win more than Utah and Oklahoma City. They I will guarantee. They you still that got right Demar. Now. No, I will, what am I? You are telling me. I will guarantee the, the Spurs are you above think the, the Spurs Jazz. aren't about to try to go for Victor. No, they are. They have they are. probably the worst roster in the here's NBA. Here's the thing. They're not about to. Here, here's the thing. They are going to go for Wimbanyama. Popovich can do all he wants. This roster just ain't good enough. It's better than OKC. It for is sure. not better than yes, no, it is. Yes, it is. Not. Without no, Chet, yes, no. it is. You got Shea. You Malik, got Josh Giddy. Malik. You have young players. Time stamp should, this, Joey. Time stamp this. I agree. Spurs. I think the he, Thunder he, are better. He thought, he thought the Thunder with Chet could possibly make the play in. Next season, when we do this preview the again. Will, hold on. Oh, no. When they when we do this preview again, I want to play this clip when the Spurs win more games than the Thunder this season. You like the Spurs young players more than OKC's? I think the Spurs are going to be more competitive. Outside of Kelton Johnson? No, I'm not saying I like their prospects better. I think they're going to be way more competitive. There's a difference between being competitive and having better prospects. I think the Spurs will be competitive for about 20 to 30 games. All right. The bet's on the table right there. You saw it there. I still I'm taking the Spurs. I, I mean, you're getting a lot out of Trey Jones. That means Zach Collins is going to stay healthy. That means Doug McDermott. Listen. Okay. All right. I'm taking the Spurs okay. tonight, too. The Spurs are going to need – all their rookies to play well. Blake yeah. Wesley, Malachi Branham, Jeremy Sho I like Soshan. They're Soshan gonna need, is my guy. They're going to need to like step up if they want to do. They got a, a good, decent young core, I think. But you shouldn't. Try they're to better. Win. Th they're better than the Jazz, in my opinion. You shouldn't try to win more than 20, 20 games if you're the Spurs. You guys are too high on the Thunder. I'm high on their talent, not on them being like a great team. I, I'm more into. I'm. More into their talent than the Spurs. Yeah, and I, I'm a Kelton Johnson guy. Uh, well, I agree I'm with you. I'm a Jeremy you that. Sohan guy. I agree with you there. I am in on their talent more so than the Spurs. Now, if they trade, if they trade Shea, the Spurs will be a more competitive team. With Shea, they always have chances to win games. With Shea. Spurs will still be more competitive than them, no. with or without Shea. Last year, Shea was winning them games. All the that's why they had to sit him. Because yeah, Shea, exactly, they're going to sit him. They're not going to trade him. They're going to sit him. He's going to he's going to play forty season. games. This Shea will play. 40 to 50 games a season, that's it. 
That means the that means the Thunder will be more competitive if he plays that many games. All right, we'll see. We'll see. That was Either fun. way. <laughs> I think <laughs> we talked about Spurs and Thunder. For I think I, this is why we're here. This is why we're here, Chris. If anything, this do you guys think the Jazz are a worse team than those two? Again, I think the Spurs are Probably. just going to be the most the more competitive team because of what are the, what the Spurs stand for in their competitive nature. And you have Greg Popovich, who's not going to tank or take anything easy. These guys are going to play hard, and that's going to win them some games. The Thunder don't have that. They don't have that type of. Listen. Environment. The Jazz have a the Jazz coach. have a fire sale. They have a first year coach and a mismatched roster. Yeah, where mm-hmm. some guys are leaving. Yeah, some guys are staying. You you don't know. It's yeah. Connolly Clarkson are, will not finish on that yeah. team. Colin Sexton is like the one guy I I, I assume is going to be there. Yeah, him and Jared Vanderbilt, Ocheg Baji maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah. who do you guys have in the, the Northwest? Do we all have the Nuggets? Yes, yes. Oh, clear favorite. Okay. Moving on to everybody's favorite division, the Pacific Division. The best in the biz. The uh, Pacific Division. I do think they'll be back a little bit, uh, but this division is kind of the hardest for me. So, I think we're gonna agree on one thing, Joe. <sighs> no, we're probably not. What? We're gonna. <laughs> I think we're gonna agree on one on one team. What's this thing? Oh yeah, the bottom. The Kings. Nope. I think they're gonna improve. No. I think I have the Kings I think, in the plan. I think the Kings are gonna be better, but. Oh God. I can't Kings are the play. They're my. I have them leaping the Lakers. This for the final I love play-in. Demontis, but I think I think they made good signings. I think Mike Brown is a good coach. Yep. I think Mike Brown is overrated. I think he's a good. I I think he's overrated to a certain I'm excited. extent. But I still think he's a good NBA coach. I don't think he's anything more anything more than a good coach. I think I'm excited to see the but, difference between him now listen, than when he was in Cleveland with the, with these veterans. And you, these are they have like an eight nine man rotation of all guys that they can trust. They all know their position. They all know their role. I like the Kings. Oh, I forgot they even got my boy Kevin Herter over there. They got, Kevin, they got Herter. Kevin Herter. They got Malik Monk, That's two trusted same. shooters. And here's the thing: the Malik's going to be their sixth man. They're going to have De'Aaron Fox, Kevin Herter. Keegan Murray's going to average like seventeen a game. I mean, Keegan the, Murray, listen, I like their starting lineup too: De'Aaron, De'Aaron Fox, Kevin Herter, Keegan Murray, Demontis Sabonis. Raquan Harrison Holmes. Barnes. Harrison oh, Barnes. I forgot about Harrison Barnes. Yeah, yeah Holmes will come but off the bench. They have, they have like a nine-man rotation, Joey. No, I, they have I a, think they're they going to be good. good. They have a good rotation. I think they're, they're going to be competitive. <laughs> I can agree with that. But I think they're still the Kings. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are still so, the Kings. All right, they well. could still be last in the division, but they could, they could still make the play. So I, I'm going to surprise everybody here. And maybe this is just my betting mind uh, speaking because it's it's – become toxified in my brain now i hear that uh my standings for this division warriors lakers clippers sons joey oh you're, the, you're, you're, the, you're the hot takes guy today <laughs> whoa yeah. you are the i knew whoa. i knew we were gonna get here eventually joe talk us through get, this get, get, yeah you can't i I'm going to say I, this. Before you start on the Lakers, you can't give a good reason of why they're going to be <laughs> So I want you to try, but you, it's, it's, you can't. So I'll give a little hint to my award, and this is definitely my betting mind. I have LeBron winning the MVP. Stop. What does that have and to do, what does that have to do with the rest of his team? I, first of all, <laughs> what did that do for his team last year when he was going crazy? I just – how have, is he going to raise them this year when he couldn't last year? I just have this bad feeling that they're somehow going to make a run. People are going to talk about him. Come on, you, you don't, don't come on. And I'm, I'm you, you <laughs> to be fair, I'm hoping that is a regular season run, and they get beat in the playoffs. They could still end up Oof. sliding into the playoffs, man. But if, right. if Anthony Davis stays healthy. Anthony Davis has to be That's the MVP the biggest, for them to be great. That is the, is. That's the problem with, with your theory. I agree with it that. LeBron is. being the MVP does not make yep. them the, yep. a second seed in that division. Yep. Anthony Davis has to be their, their best agree. player. That's why LeBron brought him there. And my other – so the Clippers being in the middle, I think they're going to take some time. Kawhi, I don't even know when he's going to play, when he's not going to play. So I'm, I'm struggling to believe in them. Even when him, when Kawhi and Paul George didn't play, they were better than the Lakers last year. And as <laughs> I'm scared with the Suns that something's gonna. I don't care for the Suns this year. Go awry. Yeah, there's it's it doesn't feel good over there. And 
Yes, the Kings are improved. They've made some moves. But the Lakers look great. But they're Sacramento. That Lonnie Walker. The I understand putting them last. I understand it. But to Joey, I please. Joe, can give, I, you have a chance to revise this. Yeah, you can you can change it up right now if you want. I mean, the Lakers are going to be average at best. Yes. At best. Um, I'm going to run through mine real quick. Um, number one, I have the Clippers. I am all in on the Clippers. Uh, I'm doing this based off. That's of them also being, very risky. Well, I have it. I'm I'm thinking based off they're going to be healthy for the year. Okay. Kawhi, Paul <laughs> okay. George. Kawhi looks. I, I just think if everything goes right for them. If they're healthy, they have like a 12-man rotation. Yeah, exactly. Every player like on their team can play. Yes. Because they all did last they're year. They're 12 deep. And they won. Mm-hmm. Which is um, insane. But I go Clippers one, Warriors a close second, um, Phoenix third, Sacramento fourth, Lakers last. <laughs> you got them second, you got them last. Hey. That is incredible. At the end of the day, I would love for the Lakers to go out and be the last in this division. I just – I got a bad feeling. Malik, what you got? So, I got Warriors first. Okay. Classic. I got Clippers second. Okay. Respect. I don't think there's going to be an insane fall off with Phoenix. I do think they – how many games did they win last year? Was it They 60? won 60. Yeah. yeah. They won they were the They were the championship favorite. They're not getting the 60. I think they can still hit like 51, 52. I got them at 45. Oof. I don't think they fall off that hard. I, I think they win between like 49 and 52. Age has got to catch up to CP3 I think at some the, point. I think the Lakers win somewhere between, like, I, they win more than 33, but I don't see them getting over 45 or 46. I don't see it. 46, 45 at best. And the Kings, I think they can hit 37, 38. Yeah, for me, I got the Lakers at 35 and the Kings at 36 wins. And the Kings get the last play in. And it, they're going to go crazy. It'd be hilarious if the Lakers were last again. We all hope for it. I, I actually do. It, yeah, it's sad. For, LeBron needs to just go. Yeah, this season is about LeBron. Is, is about Kareem. Yeah, I think that yeah. that's what this season is. It's not. It's not about. Yeah, I completely yeah. agree with you. It's Malik, about him breaking the score. Man. Who do you have winning this division? Golden State. Golden State. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I knew that would be a a, a touchy a touchy one. Joe, that was rough. All right. Southwest, we got to do this quick so we can get to Pistons. Okay. Um, my order. Let's and, just do orders. Okay. And and you guys are going to call me out. <clears throat> Maybe. Pelicans, Mavs, Grizzlies, gonna, gonna Rockets, go. Spurs. No, I, I mean, I respect it. My order. I think the Pelicans are ready. Memphis. I agree. I'm going to go Memphis, New Orleans, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio. I'm going to go Dallas. So, I got New Orleans second. I go Dallas one. I mean, Luka to so, go. Luka so to go. I know who your MVP vote is. Luka to go. I know who your MVP That's vote is. That's not my MVP vote, actually. Spoiler. <laughs> but Luka to go. How are they, they going to be first in this division that he's not MVP? That roster isn't the strongest. Spencer Dinwiddie, six man of the year. Lu- so <laughs> Put I that got, in, please. I got Mavs it. one, Grizzlies two, Pelicans three, um, Houston four, Spurs five. I think those top – the. The race between Dallas, Memphis, and New Orleans is going to be between two two or three games. Mm-hmm. It's going to be super, super competitive. Yeah, I agree. It should be close. Um, I like what the Rockets are doing. I, I hope yeah, they're yeah, competitive. But I think it's the Pelicans' time. Zion, just just stay healthy, please. Yeah. Um, and they might they might be ready. They might be ready. Um, Malik, why do you like the Grizzlies so much? Touch on that. They won. They went twenty and five without Ja last year. It's true. Uh, I honestly, I don't think much more needs to be said besides that they they just re-signed Brandon Clark. Every player they draft or sign in the past three years has just worked. They have a system. They know exactly what p- kind of players to draft. Nobody knew who Santi Aldama was last year, and he might be like one of their most improved players this year. They just they have talent all over the place. He makes number forty six look nice. <clears throat> that's that's Conchar. Oh my bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's John Conchar. He's solid, too. But, you know, my guy David Roddy, he'll probably be good for them. Zaire Williams, I thought he was going to be a waste of a pick. He worked out. I, these guys, they're just a really great young core that's continuing to build. And if Josh stays healthy, could they hit 60 games? Well, I They went 20 and 5 without him. I The only reason I has I probably would have put Memphis 1 if Jaron Jackson wasn't going to miss three months. Yeah. That, that will hurt. It's a concern. That will hurt. 
But I, I, I think they'll they'll slip in defense some, mm-hmm. but I think they'd keep it rolling on offense. And they, Brandon Clark the chemistry is, nice, is just phenomenal. Yeah, they they just keep it rolling. All right, we've made it to the central. Um, does anybody want to start? Yeah, I'll take it. Okay, okay. go for it. Uh, ahead. number one for me. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. Oh, actually, it doesn't hurt for me to say this. You know All who right. number one Bucks is. is. I forgot the Bucks for yeah. the division. Yeah. Bucks clear number one. <laughs> then Cavs are two. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, then I got Bulls three, Pistons four, Pacers five. Um, I think we're still a year away from the Pistons truly, truly making a push for the plan. As much as I hope they they do this year, I'm still gonna root for it, even though I want I want Victor too. Um. The East is extremely competitive this season, and I think they're just a year away. Cade's going to look fantastic. I think we're going to see, like, 26-6 six and six from him. Borderline all-star. He didn't get in, mo- like, any foul calls last year. No, no. So as, as lo- if he gets to the free throw line more, it should easily hit 20. And I think let's, – Let's hold off the Pistons talk just a little bit. Okay. And just get through the standings real quick, and then we'll get deep okay. into Pistons. Um, Not to throw you off too much. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, So you – wait. I got Bucks one. Cavs two, Bulls three, Pistons four, Pacers five. Okay, I have the exact same standings. Okay, yeah, exact. What same What about order. you, Joe? The Bucks are ch- oh, uh, final contenders. <laughs> They're oh, final no. contenders. So, oh, no. this, this division is tough for me. How much? How did you have Don't a feeling me. for like every? No, <laughs> no, no, no. It, no. It, it feels like you had feelings for so, a lot, for some. So this division is kind of weird though. I have Bucks number one. I think that's okay. A okay. Clear cut, easy one. I went back and forth on Bulls and Cavs, actually. I think Without even, Lonzo, I, I don't yeah. see how. I just don't see it. Goron looks I, good, though. I was going to say, I really don't think Lonzo, like, is going to do much. He made he provided he, a lot on the perimeter he defense. He did. Like, well, early on in their season once he last left, year. the defense, the yeah. team fell off once he was gone. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I just think their young guys are going to step up. I have them second. I'm not super confident in it. I'm not, not going to lie. I still don't buy the Cavs, though. I, call Why? me a hater. Uh, I just I just don't. I have them three, <laughs> and then I have the Pacers four. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I think the Pacers this are is actually Joey's gonna hot take podcast. I, I think the Pacers are gonna surprise some people. Yeah, maybe if Miles Turner sticks on the roster past the deadline, but that's not gonna be the case. Maybe, maybe in Buddy Heald too. <laughs> yeah, they're they're not gonna be on the roster past. I think Tyrese Halliburton and uh, Ben Matherin are gonna make some noise though. I I love Ben Matherin. He's a dark horse rookie of the year for me. I agree. Um, I. I loved him. If Jay Ivey was on the board, that would be my guy that I would want. Um, and then the Pistons. We'll, we can get into Pistons because we got some time, and then we'll give like five minutes for awards at the end. Pistons, they're so close. They're so close. I just think – Year away. I, just, I definitely agree that they're a year away, and maybe this is just me being hopeful that they get one more lottery pick. They're going to get another top ten pick. But – they're going to get another one. I don't know. They're just not ready yet. I, I think this team is shaping up really nicely. But I think there's going to be some chemistry bumps along the way. Yeah, I think Jaden Jaden and Cade look like they'll be able to play together. Full season, we'll have to see what happens. Moving Isaiah Stewart to a stretch big just gives me Andre Drummond vibes. He it, looks like a better shooter already. I was going to say, it, are, it looks but, way better. But it I'm just either. saying... Honestly, I think the it's, hype it's around it help. is the same way. Because I'm, of their lack of shooters from last year, I think it, it helps. He shouldn't shoot more than like four yeah. a game, but it helps. I think the Bojan Bogdanovic trade was really good. Yeah. It's going to help a lot. So they can they can almost play. They'll stay in most games. They can play a five out if they wanted to. Which yeah, I think they should look into. And I think they're. I think early in the season, that's what they're going to mostly play like, especially with their starting unit, because yeah. uh, they were wavering on starting Marvin Bagley if mm-hmm. he didn't get hurt in that final preseason game, I think he would have started with Isaiah Stewart. Um now and with I him think, being I think this is a better starting lineup. The one without Bagley? Yeah. It's gonna have its defensive issues. That's where it's gonna come in. Um depending yeah. on who you're playing, right? If you're playing Memphis, you're gonna get eaten up. Mm-hmm. And you honestly I think at that point you start Jalen Duran and Isaiah yeah. Stewart because that front line is too big. Um No, I agree. I think Jalen Duran should definitely get a lot of minutes Come middle of the season, I guess. Maybe not right away, but I think you need to start playing him sooner rather than later. Yeah, and I think he's going to get minutes early on, too, because Noel just started practicing early this week. Mm -hmm. Now, does he get the backup big uh, minutes tonight? Maybe because he's the vet, but 
I liked what I saw from Duran in the preseason. Yeah, he's electric. Um, and I don't, I don't. We've seen a lot of good things out of Ivy, and some people think he could be a rookie of the year candidate. I don't. I, don't I just think, think I don't he's going to run into the same problem year, of but. Cade of like he's going to go on these really really hot streaks, and then he's going to get cold. And then the other problem, the Pistons just not being good enough. He also he won't be dependent on like Paolo or Keegan Murray. Right. See, I disagree with you guys. I think he's going to one hundred percent be dependent on similar to Keegan and Paolo. He's already uh, going to be. He's I think, already, I think Sadiq kind of fills that. He's if, already if it's half and half or more one. I think Sadiq fills that role a lot. He's already sharing ball handling duties with Cade. Yeah, we knew that. You knew that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, and he's starting taking the minutes away from Killian. Um, good. Well, he, which he's is great. The, yeah, yeah well, exactly. We knew. That we knew, we knew of course. Yeah. Of course. But he's going to get the minutes to put up those numbers. And I'm looking at the top of, you know, who are the Rookie of the Year candidates. None of those teams are going to be in the mix for the playoffs. It's going to be what does that player provide stat-wise. And if I'm looking down the list, I mean, I think it's going to be Paolo, Jay Nivey, Keegan Murray, and Benedict Matherin. Those are going to be the four. And Keegan's a dark horse because I think the Kings could be the best of that group. Paolo, does, do, does some of his... Rebounds and points go away because of Franz Wagner uh, in the front court. That's possible. I think Ivy has Ivy is a fit, has a fair chance of winning Rookie of the Year. I think he has a better chance of winning Rookie of the Year this year than K did last year. Hmm. That's my hot take for the day. <laughs> that's one. To, that's one to think about. That's one to think about. Yeah, I don't know. Last rookie of the was, Year could be tough this year. Last year was I like an odd year for the Rookie of the Year. You had two good teams push for the playoffs. And that's what propelled Scotty Barnes and Evan Mobley yeah. over Cade. If those teams are winning the amount of games that the Pistons did, I think Cade is either wins the wins the award or is second to most years, Evan Cade, Mobley. Most years, Cade wins. Yeah, it was it was a weird year where both of those rookies were on good teams. And apparently, I, I, the Rookie of the Year has never been an award where you it never you, you favor Being winning. Run, yeah. yeah, I've that's never seen was, that. That's why I was surprised. Think about year. think about LeBron and Carmelo in 03, right? Melo had the same stats as LeBron, and and his team went to the playoffs, but LeBron still won the award. Think about Michael, Michael Carter. No, I'm not going to bring him up. <laughs> I'm not going to bring him up. Um, all right, so Pistons playing Orlando tonight. We get to see two of those rookies that we're talking about. It's going to be fun. We fun get to go see teams. the game live and in person. Um, Are the Pistons going to start 1-0? Yep, there's, I'm putting it down. Starting 1-0. I don't know. I'm nervous. I will say I'm nervous. I think it's going to be a fun game. I think because I'm, I'm really excited to just watch it. Yeah, I am too. These I, are two young teams, kind of up and coming, still waiting for a win. They went winless in the preseason. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, Bobo and Mo Bamba be on the court at the same That'd time. Cool. That'd be cool. They've they've played both. They could play a they big gave Bobo lineup. a lot more minutes than Mo Bamba in the preseason. Yeah, they could have a, yeah. a real big lineup. I mean, let's talk Cole Anthony, Franz Wagner, Paolo Bencaro, Bobo, Mo Bamba. Like, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's why I said that's why the Thunder need to go get Victor. <laughs> anybody uh, can get – anybody wants Victor. <laughs> yeah. So, Pistons are going to be exciting. And the Bucks are just going to win this division. Yeah. Yep. Pretty easy. Clear. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to our awards. Let's start with Coach of the Year. The most boring, in my opinion. I got Willie Green. Hmm. New Orleans Pelicans head coach. That's a good pick. I think they one. so they make the jump, right? They weren't in the playoffs, or they were because they were in the play-in. But I think they make another jump into that middle of the pack. Mm-hmm. Zion, Brandon Ingram look great. I think the momentum of Willie Green already getting some Coach of the Year love last year will also play in a factor this year. I my runner-up for like the award one. is Doc Rivers, but my winner is Willie Green. I've got Joe Mazzula. I like that pick. I really like that pick too. I thought about him. For a I, I think they're. I think they're going to be high fifties and wins. I think they're going to. Still be that really good team. That dude is 34 years old. And yeah. It's crazy. Be- because of his age and how easy he slides in, I think he might end up winning Coach of the Year. I think I think he might be a favorite for a while, which I, I think is kind of annoying because I don't know how much he's actually going to do. Like, it, how much is he actually affecting the locker room? I don't know. Yeah. And my, my runner-up, I'll go with a, a bit of a different – I'll go Mike Malone hmm. from Denver. I think they could they could possibly if they finish top back, three in the way. Yeah. Yeah. I got a surprise one too. I'm going with Nate McMillan. Really? Yeah. I think the Hawks are gonna 
I think they're going to do enough. 60 win Hawks, Joe? No, not 60 <laughs> wins. 55? But I think uh, similar to the Pelicans, I think if the Hawks are kind of middle of that road, if they're if they're testing for like a fourth seed, it might be enough. I, I I think Nate McMillan has a I think he hit his ceiling. I think he's a good coach. Kind of like um uh the coach for the Kings now. Mike Brown. Mike Brown. Brown. Yeah. I think they're similar. I think they have so, ceilings. I think, I think Nate McMillan's better. They hit really Yeah. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. I'd agree with sure? Joe. I agree with Joe on that one. You're probably right. Yeah. But <laughs> I think they both have ceilings. Nate McMillan, everywhere he goes, he hits a certain level and then can't get That's over. fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, most improved? Most improved, I will go. I want to hear what you guys say first. Okay. I got Franz Wagner. For the reasons Chris said. I think I he's going to be more involved this year. He's my runner-up. And I think he's going to be the one to step up he's, for that Magic He's going to average like 18, 8, and like 6. Some, yeah. something and like I that. think a lot of the the pressure is going to be on Paolo. And that frees up Franz. I agree. Okay. I mean, you guys gave all the reasons, but you picked the wrong player. <laughs> okay. Cade Cunningham. That would be awesome. Not the rookie of the year. Not wins bad. the most improved. Where I mean, if I'm projecting his season... I'm looking. He's the focal point of the offense. Everything runs through Cade. The second half of the season, he finished averaging 23, 6, and 6. Mm-hmm. Now, if he takes a step back and for a whole season, averages 26 and 5, and the Pistons are more competitive now, I just don't think there's too many great He'll most be improved. In the running. I don't think there's too many great most improved player candidates, at least from the preseason standpoint. Honestly, Someone could come ben up. Ben Simmons. A guy. Uh, <laughs> that's, I, no, I mean, that's a good I'm point. Not, that's a kidding. good point. It's a good point. He's made three all-NBA teams. He's an all-star. He, he, but no, play, no player like that has ever yeah, won Yeah, but after improved. his downfall, you know, like. Mental downfalls don't get you most improved. It might. It might. I don't that, know. The, the NBA is. It'd be interesting to see. Ridiculous if that happens. Most improves usually come out of nowhere, if we're being honest. Yeah, like, yeah. Usually, like, players on winning teams usually get most improved. Mm-hmm. But. And I don't honestly, I can't pick a player at the moment. Now, if Jaron yeah, Jackson so. Jr. was out for the season, Brandon Clark would be a candidate for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not too bad. All right, um, six man. Ooh, I like this one. For me, it was pretty easy. This one was tough. I'm going Jordan Poole. That's not bad. I got Malcolm Brogdon. Really? I think he could. I like that. I, He'd I, probably be my backup. Again, I'm skeptical of the Celtics, but if they're going to be able to bounce back. I think he's the reason. I, that, th- that I dude, think he's going to be a big reason why they stay really good because he's yeah. he's going to be consistent. I felt like there. last year their depth was terrible. I think he helps that a lot. Yeah. He's such an interesting player because he won Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. He could win Sixth Man of the Year. Also, he's a he's a really great defensive player. If Marcus Smart can win Defense of the Player of the Year, I mean, I know it's a little bit far fetched, yeah. but he's that type of player that could win those three type of awards. He's he's a really like a Swiss Army knife on the basketball court. Um, I go with Malik. I go Jordan Poole because, I mean, all the lights are on Golden State. Clay's starting this year. Jordan Poole just got paid. And, and he's going to get knocked lo- out. So, you know. After this Draymond situation, I think he's, he's locked that's in. What he's gonna, that's what he's going to do. He's locked with, in. I think he's, yeah. Um, but my runner-up, who I really think could actually win this too, especially if how my standings turned out, Christian Wood. Yeah. I don't, kind of a I don't, I don't, like, how is starting. I don't like how they're starting this situation. He should be starting. I, I don't like yeah I, I don't know how to feel about that situation yeah it could be if Dallas is that great and Christian averages good numbers but yeah I forgot you were a Christian Wood guy I forgot about I that. know I miss he would <laughs> rookie of the year listen I'm um, a tough one I'm, I'm going I'm going Paolo okay I think he averages the best numbers I'm going Keegan Murray I think he's the most ready I think he's got most opportunity yeah. it's a safe pick my runner-up, though, Benedict. Tari Eason. <laughs> Big Tari Eason guy. Tari Eason I winning like Tari. rookie of the year. I like Listen, Tari, but not the, rookie of the year. The only way that would happen is if people got hurt. Yeah, That's I, the only I way. Agree. I that think, is the only way. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. I that's mean, I agree. Way. with. I think he's going to be good. My right. dark horse that's not going to win it that I would want to win it, Walker Kessler. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> um, my runner-up's Paolo. I'm riding with my guy, Jaden. Okay. I really think, I, I mean. I don't see him averaging more than like 15, 14 or 15. I don't see him averaging more than that. I mean, if he Because I, th- I think Sadiq is most likely going to be the second leading scorer. It's possible. I, I mean, think, I, I think it could go either way, honestly. Jaden Ivey's going to have a lot of usage rate on this team between him and Cade being the ones bringing the ball up. 
he plays such an intangible role of pushing the pace, and nobody can keep up with him. He is one of the fastest players already in the NBA with the basketball. And then we saw that in the preseason, too. So if he can kind of unlock that and be more consistent with it and kind of hone that in a little bit more later down the year, I don't see why he can't maybe even average 18. I think he's going to need to do something defensively because yeah. – He's think, he's he's a good shot blocker for yeah, his size. Because I think I think Cade's going to take away obviously from his points. I think Cade might take away from some of his assists. I don't think he's going to be. I mean, he might be some of a, somewhat of a rebounder so that he can just go and push the ball right away. But I just don't know if the stats are going to be there right away. So I feel like he's going to have to do it on both ends of ends of the floor to be able to be viable for that. Granted, would I love if he could do it? Yeah, of course. But I don't know. We'll see. Defensive player of the year. This one's always weird for me. Rudy. I am Rudy. Go Anthony Davis. I mean, okay. that's a Joey pick right there. Back. I, I, hey, I, if the Lakers are going to be second in the division. I think they're average to decent because I think they improved defensively. But didn't you think they, they were going to finish last in the division? No. Oh, I had I them in said. the middle. Oh, okay, okay. Or was it second to last? I think it was second you might to have last. Had them. It was second to last. I had the Kings last and the Lakers were ahead of them. But, yeah, I think they showed signs last night in, like, the third quarter. They still got smacked. But they showed signs of being a, a, able to buy in on defense. And I think Anthony Davis, I think he has a really good season on defense. I think Darvin Ham, Darvin Ham gets it out of him. I'm kind of doing what Chris is doing. I'm, I'm diving back into the well. I'm going Giannis. I like that pick. I just – I think he might make another run for MVP. I think my runner-up is okay. Bam. My runner-up is Mitchell Robinson. I, if, he's it healthy, up earlier. if he's healthy, yeah, it, it, it definitely depends on health, but he'd be my runner up. You guys want to do finals picks real quick? We got to do MVP. Oh, I forgot about MVP. Yeah. MVP. I already leaked it. I went with LeBron. Ew. Again, I hate it. It's mostly, I think there, I think there are very slim chances that that yeah, happens. It's I ingrained very. <laughs> in my, in my betting woes. Do you put a future on that? Yes. Early on <laughs> in the season, he was like plus 5,000 or something. Uh, so I was like, okay, why not? How much did we splurge? Uh, twenty dollars. Who's your realistic MVP outside of your bed? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, technically, realistically, I do think LeBron has a good chance. Um, but this might this might be a Kevin Durant year. Ah, yeah, that's true. I got the Nets being one of the best teams in the East. They could bounce back. What and, about Kyrie? <sighs> no. I think. I mean, if they're gonna take that next step and win the division, that's true. And he he played really well last year, and he hopefully is gonna play a full season this year. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think he has a chance. I just think Kevin Durant is more of the face. Yeah. So that's where I would go. What do you got, Malik? My pick is Luca. Okay. Heck yeah. I think there's a very good chance he averages a thirty point trip. Remember when you guys were clowning me when I said Luca's gonna be one of the best players? We weren't clowning you. You were, we were clowning saying, me. Play we weren't clowning you. We were saying wait. I said call, he was already we were gonna, saying calm down. I, I, I said future MVP before you were, he was you drafted. Were. You called you, you did. And he's gonna be you an did. MVP. You get your props for that. He hasn't got it but yet. We were saying calm down. That's what we were saying. Didn't need to. <laughs> yeah, I think he could average like thirty one, yeah. eleven and eleven yeah. or something. He could do something crazy. He's gonna have a ridiculous season. Yep. I'm going Giannis. Yep. I think a bounce back year for the Bucks. They're healthy. Uh, well, they will be healthy at the end of the year with Chris Middleton missing a couple weeks. But um, Giannis is going to put the league back on notice that he's he's the dude. He's the guy leading the pack in the NBA. He's. Mm-hmm. I mean, Steph Curry, you know, you have Steph, LeBron, KD is kind of semi-faces of the NBA. I think Giannis is the best player in the NBA. I think he is Most the- dominant. Actually, I should change that. Most dominant. He's the most underrated superstar in NBA history. He's also the nicest superstar in NBA history. He's I, such a I nice think, dude. I think the NBA com- community, well, fans, don't. they just don't care. There are a lot of people that still think he's not that good. It's because he's not flashy. He doesn't have that flash there, People still go with the he just runs and dunks thing, mm-hmm. which is dumb, ridiculous at this point. But yeah, I I don't know why. Yeah, people give the man his respect. He's got a ring and yeah. an MV, a couple MVPs. Like he's he's Come got on. he's the he's he's got the mentality. He just kills nonstop. He's smart. Let's say he yeah. wins an MVP this year. That's three MVPs. Yeah, that's nuts. It's elite company. Has LeBron done that? Has Kobe done that? No. Not too many people have done that. Um, okay, let's do the finals pick then. All right, I'll go first. 
right. Um, my finals are the Golden State Warriors versus the Philadelphia 76ers. And I got Philly winning it all. I think the Sixers are just one of those teams that will never be able to get over the hump. That's fair. That's but I, if, there's, if there's a year that they're going to, it's going to be with an in-shape and healthy James Harden mm-hmm. and an MVP-esque jo- Joel Embiid yeah. and a bunch of fillers around them. My pick is Golden State, Milwaukee, and Steph gets his fifth. I and like at that, that point, I like that we're going to have to have some conversations yep. once Steph gets his fifth ring. If you say the Lakers, Joey, <laughs> no. if you say the Lakers, <laughs> no, we're they're, I, I I can't pick, predict the, the Lakers past the regular season. The play-in I, tournament? I, I hope they lose. If they make the playoffs like I expect them to, I hope they just lose right away. Um, no, I have the Warriors and the Nets. Mm-hmm. And I have the Warriors finally proving they don't need Kevin Durant. Um, that would be a fun finals. Though. It would be, and I, I think as much as I hate Brooklyn, I think I think the the Pelicans could make the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, yeah, I like Denver. If it all comes together, call me a drinking chance. the Kool Aid. But I, if it all comes together, there's a chance. Yeah, I listen. I like their playoff chances more than Dallas. Yeah, I do. Well, I pick because I, I just don't. I like mean, Dallas's I this roster. If it wasn't much. for the Warriors and how good I think they're going to be, like the Nuggets are my dark horse out of the West. I love the Nuggets. I've loved them when they're healthy. I mean, you got Jokic, Jamal Murray is a great, great sidekick. I mean, look what Jokic did with that team last year. Mm-hmm. So, um, I really like Denver. I think the Nuggets are the Sixers of the West. <laughs> nice. They okay. can't get over the hump. All right. Unfortunately. All right. That's our NBA preview. Uh, that's everything. So now it's just sit back, watch the games. Not be able to watch Pistons games because they're on Bally Sports. Wait, what? I'm not getting Bally. You can't. That's a whole nother. How about you? I'm oh, I got Bally. NBA League Pass. I might have yeah. to think about it. I'd, I'll have to. Man, so yeah, here up here in Michigan, out. things are things are rough. Wait, what? You guys? It's not. They're on, on Bally Sports, and Wait. Bally Sports is they don't have good terms with uh, the, like per, the the cable, cable? Pro- programs. Mm-hmm. They have their own streaming service. Oh you shoot! Have to, you have to get their streaming service. Oh shoot! It's uh terrible. It's awful. <laughs> Oh, that's ridiculous. Um, that's easy How much for me. Is it Who's going to pay to watch the Pistons and the Tigers? I mean, I literally pay to watch the Pistons in Cleveland, so I can't talk. How much is Bally a month? I don't Do you know. know. I don't want to know. If I'm not going to pay them. Hey, League Pass, than... team, the team pass for League Pass, uh, for NBA League Pass is like 10 bucks. I would rather have League Pass. I have to think about it. It's worth it. Yeah, I, I, might, it. I might debate it off based off of tonight's game. Yeah. So... Hopefully the Pistons can improve. I don't need them to win a lot of games. I just need them to look good, um, similar to what they've been doing. So if they just keep doing what they're doing, I'll be happy. And I got a new house, a new TV to watch all the games that are on primetime. They have, like, one game on primetime. But I do agree, less Lakers, please. Yes. This has been Views from the Sidelines. Love that Chris was able to come back. Oh, so much fun. Thanks you guys for having episode. me. Um, basically... 199 that we're calling 200 because it should be um but it's not um that should be the title of the episode episode 199 but it's it's not it's technically it's, yeah, it's 200. episode 200 but it's not it's technically 199 so yeah that's the name that's right cool. there um this has been views from the sidelines we'll see you guys next time. go pistons pistons 2026 champs chris let's go baby 2025 might be a year early